I'll never forget when I first started applying for my first data analyst job. I opened my laptop with a fresh cup of coffee ready to start my data analyst job search. I started applying to probably 20 or 30 jobs a day and every morning I'd open my inbox and it would be empty. My data analytics portfolio was right there. I spent months on it, but it felt like nobody was looking at it. So I did tons of research, watched every video I could about data analytics portfolios, talked to other people, asked hiring managers, and I made a bunch of small tweaks to my portfolio that actually started to get me noticed. And I changed so many small things in my portfolio, and then suddenly I started getting inbound messages from hiring managers and recruiters. And then I landed the job. Here's what changed. 27 small portfolio improvements that were quick to make, but made a huge difference. And Today, I'm sharing all 27 with you. So make sure you stay to the end so you don't miss anything important that you didn't already know. Welcome to episode three of my killer portfolio series. Go ahead and subscribe because I know you want to. Host your portfolio on GitHub, not some fancy random website. Not only are data analysts hiring managers very comfortable in GitHub, but you don't need to over-engineer it and make some crazy website and front-end interface. That's doing way too much. Next, you need to have this link easily accessible for hiring managers. So that means put it at the very top of your resume, on your LinkedIn, profile and you can even add a link in your email signature. That way recruiters and hiring managers can find it super quickly. But another tip, once you apply for the roles, make sure you attach your portfolio directly. Whether it be in your application or in an email, just make sure that link is front and center when you actually apply for the role. And another tip, make sure all of your links work, go to the right place and have the right permissions so anybody who has the link can view your work. Sometimes I see portfolios that don't even have share access. So you click the link and it's broken or you don't have permission to view it. Get your links and check them in a private browser to make sure anybody can access your work once they open it because nothing makes you look more sloppy or unprepared than sending over a link that doesn't even work. Next, if you can choose a specific niche or industry and honestly, whatever you choose might depend on your past experience or whatever you're most excited and passionate about, but try to align your portfolio to one industry. That way hiring managers can see that you're already doing work in their industry. It's going to make it easier for you to get hired because they're going to already be able to envision you on their team doing their type of work. By the way, if you need project ideas for your industry, for your data analytics, portfolio, grab my free project ideas by industry below. And if you're really serious to actually start building your data analytics portfolio today, then check out my 100K data portfolio blueprint. It walks you through the entire process in extreme detail of exactly how to build your portfolio from choosing the right data sets or even making your own custom data sets for your industry to building the right projects that hiring managers actually care about. And finally, how to turn your portfolio into a sales document that actually sells you to hiring managers and convinces them to hire you. Links for both are in the description below. Next is quality over quantity. Keep it simple. It's better to only have two or three really good in-depth projects than to have 10 that are half-baked, super chaotic, and surface level. Focus on depth, not width. Next, make sure you're building a project to run a business question, not a data set. So don't start it out with, here's my data set. This is what I'm going to do. Start it out with an actual business question. Why do you have this data? What does it mean? And what are you trying to accomplish here? And to help accomplish that, my next tip is to make sure you use the most realistic data sets possible. Kaggle is fine, but if you can find an API or some sort of really awesome public data set, those are going to be more realistic and less sample and cookie cutter. So please, for the love of God, do not use the Titanic or the Iris data sets or COVID or Pokemon or anything like that. Use something realistic and focus around an actual industry or business problem. And another pro tip from me is that you can actually create your own data sets in ChatGPT with the right prompt. That'll help you make something a little more realistic and actually targeted in your exact industry. And because it's made in ChatGPT, it's already anonymized and it's just like a fake sample synthetic data set so you can actually share it around without worrying about sharing confidential information. Next, every project needs to have some sort of quantified impact or outcome from your project and it needs to be related to the business question for the project. The quantified impact metric should either be time saved or money made. Think about it. Businesses care about time and money because time is money. So you need to share how you either made the company more money, save the company money or save the company or people at the company a bunch of hours. And you can estimate it if it's like a fake project. Just like make it up and be transparent about that in interviews. Next, in your GitHub, always include a README page. Your README page is going to make sure you highlight all the right things in your project and you keep the most important stuff front and center for hiring managers because most hiring managers aren't going to dig through 100 files and every line of your code. And honestly, if they did, I'd be pretty scared. Next, you're going to add helpful but also concise code comments explaining what you're doing as you're doing it. So if you're creating some metric or transforming the data in some sort of way, explain what exactly you're doing and why, but keep it brief. Next, if you're lucky enough to be working in some sort of workbook or data science notebook, you can actually add in markdown cells of text that explain in more depth what you're doing and more importantly, why you're doing it. 
Next, you're gonna wanna show sample rows of your SQL query results. So don't just dump a bunch of code and queries and just expect someone to figure out what you're doing and imagine what the results look like. Actually show someone what the results look like by showing them a little preview, just like 10 rows is good. Next is make sure you show your data cleaning steps visually. Again, no one wants to look at your code and try to figure out and decipher what it means and what exactly it's doing, especially when it comes to data cleaning. So show a quick example of the before and the after. That way they can visually see what your data cleaning steps are doing. Next, this one applies if you made your own custom data set or found it from a really cool data source, but you need to include a data dictionary. It's way easier than you think. You can literally just get an Excel sheet and list all the columns in your tables, the allowed values, the data types, anything important that they should know about your data before looking through your analysis. And next, of course, you should document your data model or your entity relationship diagram. If you're working with multiple tables, it's going to be really helpful for that person to understand how all the different tables are related to each other and connected. And and it's gonna show that you have a much deeper understanding of data if you're actually thinking about the data model and how all the tables are connected versus just all the tables in isolation. Because unfortunately, documentation is a huge part of a data analyst job. Next, make sure you're super familiar with advanced SQL. That means CTEs, subqueries, window functions, union, joins, especially self joins. And next, make sure you have a project that actually shows you know how to do data cleaning. If you're always starting with an already cleaned, ready to go data set, they're gonna be wondering if you actually know how to clean data, which is about 80% of a data analyst job. So for at least one of your projects, make sure you start out with a little bit of a messy data set and actually show what decisions you made to clean it up and get ready for analysis. Next, make sure you do some exploratory data analysis and this can be a separate project on its own or it can be the start of literally any project because an exploratory data analysis or an EDA is a really common type of analysis. It shows that you can explore data and pull random insights with data without any specific directions or instructions. So that'll be things like looking at descriptive statistics data distributions, outliers, visualizations, trends, correlations, all that stuff. And it shows that you're curious and able to just jump into things without having like a straight path of where to go, which is a really good skill as a data analyst because very often we have no idea what we're doing or where we're going. You just have to jump in. Next, another project you have to have is a full stack project. That means taking a project all the way from point A all the way to point Z. So from beginning to end. That means starting out with messy data, transforming it, cleaning it, getting it ready for analysis, writing all your SQL queries, that stuff, and then bringing it into a business intelligence tool, something like Power BI, Tableau, maybe building a data model, maybe some further transformations, data visualization, and then data storytelling with dashboards and writing up all the results and insights. Not only does this show that you actually understand the full life cycle of data and how it gets from the very beginning all the way to the non-technical stakeholders, but it also shows that you can work with multiple tools and integrate them all together versus just a few projects and tools in isolation. Next, you're gonna wanna include at least one advanced business project. Some ideas are a funnel analysis, cohort retention, and churn. Next, you're gonna wanna optimize your queries and make sure you're following all best practices when it comes to writing your code. Because if you have massive optimization issues, it's gonna make you look like a newbie and hire managers are not gonna like to see that. Next, if it's applicable, you can actually do things multiple ways like CTEs versus subqueries and share your reasoning for using whichever one you end up using. This shows that you know multiple skills to tackle the same problem and you can evaluate trade-offs and pros and cons of each. Next, if you found a public data source or made one from ChatGPT, just make sure you link and say where the data actually came from. Next, at the very end of your project, make sure you address any limitations, maybe data limitations, any assumptions you made and any recommended next steps you would do if you continued on with that project. Project. And next, make sure you always lead with business impact, not your technical process. And you can use the quantified metric that I mentioned before. That's what you wanna lead with at the top of your project. It's very enticing, it's interesting. It makes people wanna read on further. And at the end of the day, it's the most important because business is what's most important in business. No one cares that you did X, Y, Z analysis and use all these different functions. They care about the business impact. And then that'll hook them in and then they'll look at the rest. And because that impact is so important, you wanna make sure you start out your project with an executive summary. This is gonna show the business impact and the overall results of your project, a brief introduction of your technical process and any next steps, limitations, anything like that. You now have 27 ways to make your portfolio get noticed and stand out. And most people skip these steps. They make projects like this, this, or this. And honestly, those make recruiters cringe. 
But you, you're different. You stay to the very end, so I know you're committed. And if you're really committed, go grab my free project ideas in the description below. And if you're super, super committed to actually start building your data analytics portfolio today, go grab my 100K data portfolio blueprint below. It breaks down everything you need to actually build a data analytics portfolio completely from scratch. From choosing or making the right data sets, choosing the projects that hiring managers actually care about, and turning your portfolio into a sales doc that sells you to hiring managers and go watch my other episodes of my killer data analyst portfolio series. Sending you lots of big data energy. Bye.